Hello, this is Terry again. Uh, today I want to share with you another how-to example. How do you find the formula for the sum of i to the kth power, where i runs from 1 to n, and k is some fixed positive integer? I'm going to show you a method called telescoping and uh, how it works. <coughs> so let's start with a very well-known formula, which is when you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n, where n is some fixed you know, positive integer, the answer is n times n plus 1 over 2. Now, how did you do that? So it turns out that, you know, you can use a simple trick. And the trick was, you know, this, this is a well-known trick. The trick was, let's add 1 through n. Say, I don't know what the answer is, but I do know it's finite because I stop at some fixed n, so I know the answer is fixed. Uh, but I don't know, and of course it's going to be, you know the answer is going to be a function of n. But let's say I don't know what that formula is. Let's call it S of n. Now, <clears throat> because addition is commutative, meaning essentially I can add forward, I also I can add backward. So instead of adding forward from 1 to 2 and then to n, how about if I add it backward from n to n minus 1 all the way back, back, back down to 1. Now you would agree these two produce exactly the same answer. So if I were to add these two, <coughs> in other words, if I were to take S of n on the first method, add it to the S of n of the second method, line them up, you get 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. And then the second method is n plus n minus 1 plus all the way down to 2 plus 1. Right? So now if you line them up and add the first term of the first method to the first term of the second method, you're going to get n plus 1. If you add the second, uh, sorry, the, the second, if you add the second term of the first method to the second term of the second method, you're going to get n minus 1 plus 2, which is also n plus 1. In fact, you quickly realize that, hey, wait a minute, if I line them up and add them vertically, you know, every single term is going to be n plus 1, right? And if every single term is going to be n plus 1, how many copies do I have? n copies. So therefore, the answer is n times n plus 1. But keeping in mind, n, plus, n times n plus 1 is more than what I need. Because remember, I need S of n. This is twice of what I need. Okay, so divide both sides by 2. When you divide both sides by 2, you quickly establish your formula, which is the sum of i, or sum of i to the first power, is n times n plus 1 over 2. <coughs> um, this is a well-known, like I said, this is a very well-known formula. Uh, you know, uh, you, you probably have learned it, you know, somewhere you know, in, in, in your math education. Well, I have some bad news. The bad news is, let's say if you're going to try the same trick on sum of i squared, sum of i cubed, uh, you're going to quickly run into all sorts of issues. In my opinion, this trick doesn't work well you know, for anything beyond, frankly, you know, sum of i is the one. So what does work then? Well, in my opinion, the answer is telescoping. I think this is a very neat way of doing things. Uh, I'm sure it's not the only way, but it's a very good way. <clears throat> what I like most about this method, in a minute I'll talk about it, is it's consistent. It, it, you know, it, all you have to do is put in the work and you always guarantee you have an answer. All right, so let's start with, what is telescoping? <clears throat> let's go back and start with something simple. Sum of i running from 1 to n of 1. Now you look at it and you say, oh, come on. Yeah, this is pretty obvious, isn't it? Isn't it sum of i running from 1 to n of 1? Isn't it just n? Yes, it is. However, I want to use this simple method to illustrate the telescoping method. So instead of writing 1, I'm going to write 1 to the 0. So, and then the second one, I'm going to write 2 to the 0. And then the last one, I'm going to write n to the 0. Now you agree with me. All these 1 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 0 is 1, every, all the way up to n to the 0 is also 1. So this is basically just a different way of writing what exactly what this is. How many terms are there? N of them. So you might wonder, looking at this and say, why did you do this? Well, let's look at the first one. Uh, 1, I'm going to write it as 2 minus 1. The second one, I'm going to write it as 3 minus 2, and so on. And then the, la the, you know, the second last term is going to be n minus the quantity n minus 1. The last term is going to be the quantity n plus 1 minus n. You notice every single group here is 1, right? But, you know, so if I were to write it like this, you know, just give it some thought and you realize quickly, oh, this is just i plus 1 to the first power minus i to the first power. 
you're telescoping. You go forward and you subtract the current. Then you go forward again, you subtract the current. If you do the math, right? You look at this, then you look at this telescope and you realize something funny is happening. You see this minus one has no one to cancel with. So it stays the same. However, look at this positive two. It cancels with this negative two. Look at this positive three. It cancels with this negative three and so on. And in fact, if you keep looking at this, you quickly realize, hey, wait a second. The only thing that survive is minus one in the first time and n plus one of the last time. And so this is just minus one plus n plus one, which of course you know is n. Okay, great. So this telescoping method, we can see that it works, right? For i to the zero, sum of i to the zero, which is n, which we know is the answer is correct. Well, remember, you know, we have already established this method, th this formula using this trick. Well, will the telescoping method produce the same trick? Well, let's see. <coughs> Suppose I were to sum i to the first power, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n. Now, let's consider this term. Sum, t sub n, I call it t sub n, sum of quantity i plus 1 squared minus i squared. Now, at the moment, you might look at this and say, wait, what does it have to do with what we're trying to do? Just be patient and just continue, and you'll see in a minute why. What is i plus 1 squared minus i squared? Let's do the math. i plus 1 squared minus i squared is i squared plus 2i plus 1 minus i squared, which leaves you with 2i plus 1. So the answer is t sub n, this thing, is going to be the sum of 2i plus 1. Now, because the sum, I'm summing from 1 to n, which I know the answer is fixed, so I can always do algebra and pull out the 2. This is just nothing more than 2 times sum of i plus sum of 1. But wait a minute, you know the answer is the sum of 1, which is n. Okay, so plug it in. So this is tn, and this is n. This is 2 times what I'm trying to solve. So therefore, what I'm trying to solve must be tn minus n, all divided by 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Right? Okay, at this point you say, are we done? Well, no. If you don't know what t sub n is, it's no good. Well, let's solve for t sub n. Remember, t sub n is telescoping. But t sub n, based on that formula, right, is always i plus 1 quantity squared minus i squared. When i equal to 1, I'm going to get 2 squared minus 1 squared. When i equal to 2, I'm going to get 3 squared minus 1, 2 squared, and so on. So you keep doing this. You're going to end up with 2 squared minus 1 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 squared plus 4 squared minus 3 squared on and on all the way to n plus 1 quantity squared minus n squared. Again, by now you realize that all these will drop out except minus 1 squared and then n plus 1 quantity squared. You can quickly do some math. n squared, this n plus 1 quantity squared is n squared plus 2n plus 1. Minus 1 is n squared plus 2n. So now that I know what t sub n is as a formula, I can just plug it back in here. Subtract n divided by 2 because I know that's going to be my answer. So subtract doing the math, t sub n minus n is n squared plus 2n minus n, which is n squared plus n, which I can factor out as n times n plus 1. So when, all, when you plug everything in, you're going to get n times n plus 1 over 2. Great. I have now, using, using the telescoping method, I have now confirmed, by, or I should say, I, my telescoping method has shown the same answer as I did over here using this trick, right? So at least I know, okay, you know, this method worked so far. All right, let's try i squared, right? Again, by now, you probably realize the trick. If you're trying to do i squared, always go one degree higher. So define the t sub n as this guy, sum of i plus one quantity cube minus i cube. Let's do the math i plus 1 quantity cube is i cube plus 3i squared plus 3i plus 1 minus i cube. You do the math, you're going to get 3 sum of i squared plus 3 sum of i plus sum of 1. Now, you know the answer for sum of 1 so far. You already worked it out, that's n. You know the sum of i, which is n times n plus 1 over 2. You don't know this, that's what you're solving for. So therefore, what you're solving for is going to be this tn minus 3 times n times n plus 1 over 2 minus n all divided by 3, right? So once again, you know what you're looking for must be this. But what is t sub n? Telescope it, right? Remember t sub n is, again, i plus 1 cube minus i cube. When i is 1, 2 cube minus 1 cube. When i is 2, 3 cube minus 2 cube. And add them up. And that negative is going to cancel. So you get 2 cube minus 1 cube plus 3 cube minus 2 cube plus 4 cube minus 3 cube and so on. 
by now you should realize everything will drop except the minus one cube on the first time and the n plus one quantity cube on the last time. So that the answer is this, right? So you plug everything back in, right? So if you plug everything back into this formula, right, you're gonna get one third n plus one cube, and then later on I'm gonna subtract the minus one and put it at the end. Minus three half n times n plus one minus n, but don't forget there's a minus one coming from the beginning, so it's minus a quantity n plus one. You do the algebra, right? You, 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 then you, you simplify the algebra all the way, you're gonna end up with this answer, n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. And that also is correct, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna fly through this very quickly for some of IQ, but before I do that, let me introduce a notation just to help us out. Instead of writing sum of i to the zero, from running from one to n, how about let's call it sn zero. Instead of summing i to the first power, let's call it sn one. Summing i squared is sn two. All of, in general, for any fixed k, sum of i to the k, let's call it snk. Okay, using this notation, to solve for sum of i cube or sn3, I'm going to start with the telescoping term, sum of the quantity i plus 1 to the 4th minus i to the 4th. Right? So remember, if you want to solve i cube, you need to go one degree higher to i to the 4th. Right? Define it like this then you know by now, by writing out the telescoping, it's 2 to the 4th minus 1 to the 4th, plus 3 to the 4th minus 2 to the 4th, all the way on. And you know by now, all this is going to drop out except minus 1 to the 4th on the first term and n plus 1 to the 4th on the last term. So the answer is going to be like this, right? But at the same time, algebraically, what is t sub n? Right? t sub n, you, do, you, you, you plug in this formula, you're going to realize it's 4 sn cube, I'm sorry, 4 sn3 plus 6 sn2 plus 4 sn1 plus sn0. So to solve for sum of i cube, which is sn3, you just take tn minus 6 sn2 minus 4 sn1 minus sn0 all divided by 4. Well, you plug all everything back in. Remember, you know the answer to sn0 and you know the answer to sn1, which is n times n plus 1 over 2. You also know sn2, which is n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 over 6. So you have all these pieces. So just plug them back in, simplify the math, and you're going to come up with n times n plus 1 all over 2, everything squared. <coughs> okay? So once again, <coughs> starting with sn0, you establish a formula. Then sn1, you establish a formula. Then sn2, you establish a formula. And now you find out sn3. So once you know SN, the formula for sn3, now with, you know, SN0, formula, the formula for SN0, SN1, SN2, SN3, you can then go and do SN4, and so on and so forth. So let me tell you why I like this method. I like this method because you don't, know, you don't need any trick, right? It's a systematic approach. You solve, first you figure out this SN0 once, you know the formula, then you don't need to go back, you just use it. You, f you figure out the formula of SN1. Again, once you figure it out, you verify it's correct, you don't need to worry about it. And so on. So let's say you have done this for k all, all, all the way to SNK. To figure out what's SNK plus 1 is easy, right? You start with SN, T sub n, which is n plus 1 to the k plus 2. Remember, the telescoping is always like that. Only the n plus 1 quantity to the k plus 2 term on the last term survive and the minus 1 the first term survive. So the answer is always going to be S, n plus 1 to the k plus 2. If you're trying to solve for k plus 1, you know this tn has to end up with k plus 2. Now that you know t sub n, and you know the formula for everything up to s of n sub 0 to s and k, plug everything back in, do the math to simplify, you're going to get yourself s n k plus 1. Now here's what I suggest. Once you've done that, let's say you've obtained a formula, you know, you, did, you, know, you know this method requires a lot of algebra. So any number of things can go wrong in the middle of those you know, algebra, you know, so you might want to just have a way of checking that. How do you check that? Don't forget to use the principle of mathematical induction. It's a very powerful formula, it's a powerful method. So for example, how do I know this is correct? Well, let's check n equal to 1. When n is 1, n times 1 times 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Is the sum of 1 cube equal to 1? Yes. So now, suppose this formula is true for everything up to n. Let's add, add in uh, you know, n plus 1 cube at the next term. If you take this formula 
and you add n plus one quantity cube and you do the simplification of the math, you're gonna realize that, oh my God, that's just n plus one times n plus two over two squared. That's correct. So the principle of mathematical induction will help you verify whether your answer is correct or not. Okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> as an exercise, if you have time, you want to try it out, you know, try it on these, some are either fourth, some are either fifth, and see if you get this formula. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, this method works. Uh, I like it because there's no trick. It's systematic approach. But there are a lot of algebra, though, so maybe, maybe there's a downside, but... You know, to me, if you're willing to put in the work and just do the algebra, uh, you know, it's a nice way of giving, uh, getting you uh, uh, an answer. Thank you for watching.